And when you have that kind of consciousness, when you have that kind of spirit, nothing can stop you. Nothing. What would your life be like as you look toward the future? If you decided, I'm not going to allow my fears to stop me. What would your life be like? What would your future be like if you decided to want that which you desire so strongly that it prepares you past your fears, that you experience the fear, as the one book says, feel the fear and do it anyway. What would your life be like? And I'm saying to you that all of us who have been entombed by fear have the capacity to resurrect ourselves. It's not easy. Can I do it? Yes. What's one of the ways to get started? Some of us need somebody to hold our hands. Sometimes we need somebody to help us out. Be willing to say, I don't know. Be willing to reach out. Be willing to get some assistance to take you to the next level. I think it was Joe Frazier who said, he says, all of us are like the blind man at some point in our lives standing on the corner waiting for somebody to lead us across. See, all of us at some point in our lives need some help, need someone to reach out to us, to help us go across some treacherous waters that we couldn't navigate by ourselves. None of us do it by ourselves. All of us at some point in our lives. We need that kind of help. We need that kind of assistance because we grow from the people we have in our lives that can enrich our lives personally, professionally, spiritually, and all the dimensions of our lives. We don't grow in a vacuum. So as you look at yourself, what are the fears you have that maybe you need some help in strengthening yourself in that area as you assess your strengths and your weaknesses, as you begin to approve yourself and your passions and your dreams and your goals and the things that you want. If you decide to experience all of your true potential, as you decide to manifest all of your greatness, as you decide, wait a minute, what, what else is available to me out here if I decided to experience them? If you have to feel good about it, then you're doing the wrong thing. You just have to keep going. The feeling will pass, but you will remain. Happiness depends more on the inward disposition of mind than on outward circumstances. To bear trials with a calm mind robs misfortune of its strength and burden. Seneca Do your best and trust the process. It is difficult to make the right choice if you fear choosing wrongly. Success is neither magical nor mysterious. Success is the natural consequence of consistently applying the basic fundamentals. Jim Rohn Mindset Mind over matter is a powerful expression. Your ability to consciously control your mindset is what makes you mentally tough and ready for life's challenges. The secret to achieving this resilient state lies in taking control of your thoughts and allowing your thoughts to control your behaviors, not the other way around. Your ability to take control of your emotional responses and live a stoic-inspired life is the secret to success, to your happiness, and to your improved well-being. When you are able to see situations as opportunities, and emotional responses as conscious choices. When you realize things don't happen to you but rather with you, your outlook completely changes. How you see your situation affects and influences how you feel about that situation. You are not merely a byproduct of your circumstances. You are a choosing being who has the ability to determine your emotional responses, which in turn shapes how you view the world yourselves, and others. But learning to change your perspectives takes practice. Practice which will in turn help increase your self-confidence. By practicing cognitive restructuring, you can retrain your brain and create new habits that will make you the master of any situation. When choosing how you feel and react becomes your choice, you will feel more in control. 
these clubs, these parties, all this shit ain't going nowhere. The more weird you are is a reflection of how committed you are to focusing on your shit, molding and shaping and developing your ideas and your craft so that when it's time for you to make your rounds, you're going to fly. Stop running around here trying to live up to the hype, homie. Right now, you guys are sitting there, and to make that first step towards greatness is the hardest step. But there is one thing harder than that, my friends. It's later in life. As you look back on your life, the windows of opportunity has closed. Your ability is no longer present. And you think back that you could have been great. Right now, you had the ability to never have that debate inside your head. That's the debate you can never win. I don't know what dream you have, but I can guarantee you that there's somebody in the hospital right now praying, begging God to have the opportunity that you have right now. Don't blow it. It is time to go from mediocre to meteoric. It is time to go from being counted out to being counted on. An hour lost today is an hour lost forever. In life, there's no time out. You can't raise your hand and stop the clock. It doesn't happen. So instead, I recommend you learn how to flip that switch. When you face something that is overwhelming or challenging, you flip that switch that says, go time. You don't have forever. Stop acting like it. That's the way life is. You don't have enough time. You got to make time. God told me to tell you, don't pray no more. You don't need to pray. I gave you life. It's precious. You're the one playing with it. You're the one taking it for granted. You getting up late. You got an attitude. You don't feel it. I gave you breath. Fake love is mighty convincing in a world where real love is mighty rare. You can't do big things if you are distracted by small things. By performing your own duties, you attain the highest state of freedom and self-realization. Bhagavad Gita Never sell out and trust your instincts. Also, most importantly, never take loved ones for granted. Do your duty and a little more, and the future will take care of itself. Life is a dance, and we are merely the dancers. Alan Watts The rational commanding part, as it alone can stir up and turn itself, so it maketh both itself to be, and everything that happeneth to appear unto itself, as it will itself. with you wherever you go and learn by listening turn your car into a mobile classroom and listen and then listen to the sermon on Sunday morning listen to the lectures listen to the teacher listen to someone who's got something good to say and then number three is vitally important on personal development and that is read all the books all the books you can possibly read in your lifetime Mr. Shof got me started on my library. I've got one of the better libraries. Haven't read everything in it, but I feel smarter just walking in it, my library. At least I was smart enough to buy it. Now I gotta be smart enough to read it. And then of course, I gotta be smart enough to decide what's valuable and then do it. But this one is very important. Become a good reader. Some books that helped change my life. Mr. Shof recommended, of course, the Bible. And my parents made sure I was a pretty good scholar by the time I was 18. That's been so beneficial for me, drawing from those illustrations, uh, reading about those stories, people who made it and people who didn't make it and what the difference was. And then other books that helped to really change my life. One called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And then a book that helped me become financially independent by the time I was 31. And that book is called The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clayson. And I'm gonna share a little bit of that book with you when I get to financial independence today, our third subject. But I started reading the books, attending the classes, uh, making sure that I got in front of people that had something good to say. 
And then I started keeping a journal.